The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. This is the homily for the seventh Sunday in the ordinary time. I'm going to preach this homily based on today's gospel reading, which is a continuation of last Sunday's gospel reading. Before I uh, preach this homily, let me read out to you the gospel passage. Matthew chapter 5, verse 38 to 48. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one to him as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand him your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go with him for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of hell, of your heavenly Father, for he makes his son rise on the bad and the good, and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, and what recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So, be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. This is the gospel passage, which is a continuation. Late one night, a cheerful truck driver pulled up to a roadside cafe for some refreshment. As he was eating, three wild-looking motorcyclists roared up to the cafe's entrance. The atmosphere became tense as they walked in, wearing dirty leather jackets and tattoos. Immediately, they picked out the truck driver as a target of their meanness. One poured salt and pepper on his coffee. Another took his apple pie, placed it on the floor and squeezed under his dirty boot. The third overturned his coffee, causing it to spill on his lap. The truck driver said not a word. He merely stood up, walked slowly to the cashier, calmly paid his check and left. That guy is in much of a fight, is he? stood one of the motorcyclists. The waiter behind the counter peeped out into the night and then replied, Yeah, he doesn't seem to be much of a driver either. He just ran his truck over three motorcycles outside. My brothers and sisters, as I told you last Sunday, gospel reading, uh, this gospel passage is about six antitheses. Jesus quotes Old Testament uh, law from Moses, and then he further intensifies and internalizes and gives us a higher law. So what are the old uh, law and then the new higher law is teaching about unrighteous anger, teaching about sexual immorality, teaching about divorce, teaching about the swearing of oaths, teaching about retaliation, teaching about the love of enemies. And this gospel reading is the last uh, two, teaching about retaliation and the love of enemies. Sometimes people have misunderstood uh, this particular passages that we just heard. Uh, the verse is sometimes used to justify living in an abusive relationship or tolerating abusive for the sake of the family. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one to him as well. Jesus understood that responding to violence with more violence only causes it to escalate further. It's like throwing gasoline on a fire. All these passages or examples of Jesus is to put an end to violence, not to promote abusive relationship. For those who live in an abusive home environment or a domestic violence situation, Christ's teaching is a good temporary means to help keep the violence to a minimum. But it is not meant to be a permanent coping mechanism. When it is safe to do so, the person who is being abused should separate themselves from the person who is abusing them and seek counseling if that is possible. All human beings, including yourself, are made in the image and likeness of God and are worthy of respect. There is a way to work out problems, even the problem of evil. If we react to it calmly and do not do anything that would cause the evil to escalate. Sometimes the lesser of two evils is to not respond back to the evil act. 
acts that are done to us and seek a better way to resolve the situation. Instead of getting emotional, apply your reason and see if I'm going to react to this person, he's going to have to attack me more. So it is better to be calm and quiet. Violence can become an unending cycle until someone decides to change the situation with an act of peace. Violence always begets violence. The key to understand the entire chapter 5 of the Gospel of Matthew is certain words that are mentioned repeatedly. For example, uh, Jesus uses these words, You have heard that it was said, but I say to you. Repeatedly. The words, uh, you have heard that it was said, is mentioned six times. But I say to you, in the Gospel of Matthew, just in chapter 5, is mentioned seven times. Do you think it is accidental? No, there is a purpose behind it. Six is the number representing man and rebellion in sacred scripture, while seven represents fullness, completion, and especially spiritual perfection. Remember, God created man on the sixth day, but he called him to be on the seventh day to worship him. So that is why man should not remain on the sixth day, but come to him on the seventh day. Those people who refuse to come to God on the seventh day are rebelling against him. That is why we have the 666. That is one of the reasons why we are called to go and worship God on the seventh day to worship God on the Sabbath day. Why? Because otherwise we are rebelling against God. So six is the number of rebellion and seven is the number of fullness and worship. Seven times repetition of Jesus' command, I say to you, emphasizes this spiritual perfection to which he calls Christian disciples of all generations. Sometimes people also misunderstand that uh, Jesus had downplayed the Old Testament law, but no, he's not. Most people regard the Old Testament command, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, as unreasonably harsh and barbaric. On the contrary, this commandment was meant to moderate vengeance, to protect the innocent family members of an accused or convicted perpetrator of a crime, to ensure that the punishment visited on the offender did not exceed the crime. Moses was brilliant and that is why he let the lesser evil in order to avoid the greater evil. Because in order to marry another woman, the husbands were killing their wives. And uh, in order to moderate vengeance, Moses said eye for an eye. If, if a person hits on his eye, he goes and kills this person. So in order to control this vengeance, Moses brought in this moderation. Jesus is not down playing it, but is bringing this law to its fullness. As we saw the seven number in the words, you have heard that it was said. Now, Jesus uses uh, another word repeatedly here, just only three times. There is a reason why it has been mentioned three times. Teleois, to be perfect. He says, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. In the entire Gospel of Matthew, these, this word, teleo, is mentioned only three times. Why? Uh, the two times that are mentioned here are addressed to God, but the third time is actually addressed to himself. He tells the rich young man, if he really wanted to be perfect, he came and asked Jesus how to attain salvation. And he said, go and give uh, your, sell your property and give it to the poor and then come and follow me. So, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, the entire Gospel of Matthew chapter 5 is all about himself, that is Jesus. If you really wanted to reach the Heavenly Father, because it was Jesus through his baptism opened the heaven for us. What is heaven? Is being with God. That God is perfect. And if you really want to reach that God who is perfect, you have to follow the Son whom he has sent for us who is also perfect. It is only through Jesus you can reach the Heavenly Father. There is no other way. That is the core message of this entire passage. Everything that Jesus so far has said is very, very important because that is the only way we can reach the Heavenly Father. Amen.